All right, lesson one of unit four has a lot of terminology. Um, on this side of the page, I'm kind of asking you to define them. I promise not to ask you that on the test, but it has to, if you can recognize examples, um, some people can really do this side without really understanding that they're recognizing this vocabulary. Um, so let me kind of work together with this, um, both sides kind of at the same time here. So is 64 a multiple of six and eight? Most people can look at that and understand what that means, even if they're not sure what the word multiple means, okay? Um, it's kind of means if, is if you can divide 64 by six and get a whole number, then 64 is divisible by six and 64 is a multiple of six. If you can divide 64 by eight and get a whole number and can do it to both of them, then 64 is a multiple of six and eight. But if you put this one in your calculator, you'll see it doesn't equal a whole number. This one it does, but they would have to both be this to say yes. So you're gonna have to say no, 64 is not a multiple of six and eight because they're both not. So LCM, least common multiple. So what would be a multiple of six and eight? You can have six times eight and get 48. 48 is a multiple of six and eight, but it's not the least common multiple. And there are two ways to find least common multiple. One way is to just list the multiples of six. Six times one, let me write it out. Six times one is six. Six times two is 12. Six times three is 18. Six times four is 24. Let's do some multiples of eight. Eight times one is eight. Eight times two is 16. Eight times three is 24. Oh, look. 24 is the least common multiple of six and eight. That's one way to do it, just listing multiples and find one that's the same, okay? That's the easiest way. The other way is to prime factor both of the numbers. Six is a two times three. Eight is a two times two times two. What they have in common for your LCM you write once, okay? Remember 48 is a multiple, but it's not the least common. We're trying to find the smallest number. So the key is to write the one factor they have in common once, and then one more of each of the other ones they don't have in common. And when you multiply that together, you get a 24, okay? Um, that's how you can get a smaller number than just multiplying them together. You take their common factors. Uh, let's do another example of that. Uh, least common multiple of um, 36, well not 36, um, I'm gonna make stuff up, let's see. Um, 14 and um, And, let's do 14 and 18. It's probably going to be big. You want to, you don't want to multiply 14 times 18, but 14 is a two and a seven. 18 is a three, a three, and a two. So they still only have a two in common times three times three times seven. Uh, That'd be nine times is 18 times, 18 times seven, whatever that is, would be their least common multiple. Um, otherwise, you can start listing out multiples of 14 and 18, okay? So the two different ways to do that. So what, can you tell from all that what a multiple is? A multiple by definition is, um, 
oops, is a number multiplied by an integer. So I don't know that that really helps knowing the definition. Multiple of 6 and 8. That means, uh, I think I like this definition over here. It kind of means it does these numbers go into, are these divisible by this in a whole number? That kind of brings us to the divisibility test. Um, how do you know something is divisible by another? Divisible specifically refers to the fact that you get a whole number when you divide. 64 divided by 8 is another 8, is a whole number 8. 64 divided by 6 is not a whole number, so 64 is not divisible by 8 in definitional terms. Okay. Um, least common multiple. The smallest positive number that is a multiple of two or more numbers. The smallest positive number, the smallest positive number that is a multiple of two or more numbers. Okay. Divisibility test. What are the divisibility tests for two, three, and five? Divisibility test for two. How do you know a number is divisible by two? You know because the last digit, the last number on the end, is even. Okay. Zero, two, four, six, eight. Number ends in one of those numbers, or is one of those numbers, then it's divisible, as in it goes in evenly, divisible by 2. Okay? How do you know a number is divisible by 3? That's a tricky one. You actually sum up the digits, and if you can divide by 3 and get a whole number, is divisible by three. For example, let's say 1,000, let's say 159. One plus five plus nine equals what? 15? 15 is divisible by three, it gets you a whole number. So that means 159 is divisible by three. That's how that works, okay? How do you know something's divisible by five? The last digit is a 5 or 0. All right, so is 100 divisible by 5? It is, because the last digit is 0. Is 105 divisible by 5? Yes, because the last digit is a 5. Okay, divisible, as in it's divisible and you get a whole number. So is 88 divisible by 3? Without picking up your calculator, 8 plus 8 is 16. 16 is not divisible by 3. 15 is, but not 16. So, um, what is 88 divisible? No. Is 88 divisible by 3? No, it's not. Okay. Um, let's see. Let me fix the key. Sorry. Um, let's see, factors. Prime factorization of 88. Um, well, 88 is divisible by 2. You can use your calculator. 88 divided by 2 is 44. Divided by 2 is 22. Divided by 2 is 11. There you go. You have a 2, a 2, a 2, and 11. That's the expanded form. Expanded form form of the prime factorization versus the exponential, sorry about the spelling, exponential, there's probably another n in there, form, which is 2 to the third power times 11. I like to make trees. Your tree doesn't have to look like that. Some people, let's see, 88, there's lots of 8s, right? 8 into 88 is 11, but then an 8 is a 2, a 2, and another 2. 
So prime factorization need prime numbers. Four is not a prime number. Remember what a prime number is? I don't know if that's over here. A prime number is when it's only divisible by itself and one. 11 is a prime number because the only factors of 11 there are are one and 11. There's not a two, there's not a three, there's not a four, there's not a five. There's no other number besides one and itself. That's what makes it a prime number. So 13 is a prime number. 7 is a prime number. Okay? It doesn't have any other factors. So 4 is not a prime number. So when you're prime factorizing, you need to make sure the branches of your trees or the things that you list are all prime numbers. Okay? Um, factors. So what's the difference between asking for the prime factorization and asking for the factors of 88. We want to know what goes in evenly into an 88. Well, we certainly listed them up here, right? So, um, but we didn't list them all. So does one go into an 88? Yes, it does. Here, let's make a little thing. One times 88, that equals 88. How about a two? Yep, 2 times 44 equals 88. How about a 3? Does 3 go into 88? No, it does not, because 8 plus 8 is 16, not 15, so 3 won't go in. How about a 4? Does 4 go in? 4 goes in. 4 times what? 4 times 22, right? Check me, yeah. Okay, um, and how about five? No. Six? No. Six won't go in because three doesn't go in, right? Uh, seven? No. Eight? Yes. Eight times what? Eight times 11 makes 88. Okay, so not a nine, not a 10, but 11, we just said it does. And then notice this little thing here, 2, 1, 2, 4, 8, 11, 22, 44, and 88. These are four different factor pairs of 88. And you can use them to get a complete list of factors, okay, for 88. So those are your factor pairs. I use factor pairs when I factor in chapter six. So I want you to know what factor pairs look like, okay? So factors by definition, um, numbers, sorry, numbers um, multiplied together to get another number. Multiply, factors multiply together to get another number. That's all the factors are, okay? Remember we said if you have something like five, that's a factor, of, so five's a factor, x is a factor, x plus five is a factor. So these are numbers multiplied together to get another number. That's five times that times that multiplied. Okay, they're factors. All right, uh, factor pairs. Um, a set of two factors which when multiplied together give a particular product. I don't know that these definitions help. I think the examples help a little better. Um, prime numbers, um, factors of a number that are all prime. I think that's pretty self-explanatory, right? Prime factorization is put all the factors that are primes together to equal a number. Factor tree, 
That's what that is, little factor tree. Notice the branches are all, the leaves at the end of the branches are all prime numbers, okay? Um, there are more information about these in your book pages. Um, I think most of these are the arithmetic book. That's the red book, okay? Um, there's also a video for greatest common factor. Greatest common factor of 72 and 88. Uh, what goes into both numbers? Greatest common factor. Um, if you're not familiar with what goes into a 72, you can always make a factor tree. It ends in an even number. So 2 into 72 goes how many times? You can use your calculator, which I don't seem to have handy. Um... Thirty-six. Two goes into again. I mean, some of you are right now going, I do know my factors. It's eight and nine. So that's a two, a two, a two, a three, and a three. But doing it this way, you still should come out, even if you don't know your factors at all. Um, that is not an eight. Carry the one. Uh, it, wait. To an, oh my gosh. It's too late in the day and I can't find my calculator. Here we go. Um, 72 divided by 2 is 36. Divided by 2 is 18. Um, divided by 2 is 9. 9 is a 3 and a 3. Okay. Um, 88 we just had up there, 8 and 11, and then there's a lot of 2s in 8. So I don't know if that helps you find the greatest common factor, but um, 3 2s are 8s, right? There's an 8, there's an 8. So the greatest common factor is an 8, because after you take the 8 out of the 88, there's only 11, and 9 isn't the same thing. So 8 is the most you can do. Greatest common factor. Okay, it looks like three twos. Two times two is four times two is eight. So eight is the greatest common factor of 72 and 88. Okay, if you need practice on any of these things, look at these page numbers, um, which you can find in your modules.